Today, we're making a knotweed traditional mead. This honey is super fun, and I can't wait to show you how incredible the mead is with it. Let's get started. So I first want to shout out Homan's Hives for sharing this honey with me. Homan was super gracious and shared about three pounds of honey with me, and he requested that I do something fun with it. Naturally, I wanted to make a traditional mead because that's important. Today's recipe is on the screen and I think you're gonna enjoy how simple yet incredible it is. Knotweed honey is often dark, sweet, and malty. It's a close friend of buckwheat, which has some very similar characteristics. We started by sanitizing all of our equipment and then began by mixing together our must. We are using the Lalvin 71B for this brew because it's a solid yeast that ferments well with traditionals and many other kinds of brews. After we mixed our honey, water, and yeast together, we had a starting gravity of 1.076. Given that this fermentation is healthy and that I feed my yeast enough, we will see a final gravity of 1.000 after fermentation. I decided to add all of my yeast nutrient at the 24 hour mark because I was kind of lazy. The fermentation lasted about two weeks and then we noticed the bubbling started to slow down and the yeast began to flocculate to the bottom. We took another gravity reading and found out that our final gravity was 1.000. We plugged those numbers into our calculator and found out that our brew was just over 10% ABV. We then decided to rack this brew into a new container and let it set for a while. This gave it some time to mellow and for the yeast to fully flocculate to the bottom. At this point, we went ahead and added one half ounce of medium toast French oak for seven days to get some oak character. We then stabilized the brew with potassium sorbate and metabisulfite. We did this so we could safely back sweeten with more knotweed honey. This brew definitely needed a little sweetness, so we waited about two days and added 0.7 pounds of knotweed honey to back sweeten. This changed our final gravity to 1.018. We didn't do any acid adjustments or anything because I kind of liked the warmth of it. After we made sure that our brew wasn't going to ferment any further and that it was clear enough, we went ahead and bottled it. This brew has been a lot of fun and I'm super excited to share the tasting with you. So let's hop to it. Here we are, ready for the tasting in the new man-made mead brew room with all of the amazing fun things back behind me. I'm super excited to continue to film in here, but more importantly, I'm excited to taste this mead. So I have the mead right here. I have already, I'll be honest with you, I've already opened it once and my video did not do so well recording wise. I'm figuring some things out. So we're gonna go ahead and taste this thing. And I think you guys are gonna like the results. This mead has been super fun to make and I wanna give a huge shout out to Homan for sharing this honey with me. It's been a lot of fun. Um, Let's just do this. Here we go, this is me right here. Look at that beautiful color. Man, I love the color, love the clarity. It is very clear, very good looking. Ooh, yeah, minty, kind of got a minty, um, I, I, like it is a buckwheat family. So it's got that kind of uh, wheat-y style. Yeah, there's a little mintiness in here, which is kind of interesting. Mmm, okay, here we go. Oh man, that's wonderful. So the oak that we put in here has really helped to kind of round out. I always I uh, always use this analogy, but it's like a warm hug. You're just getting a warm hug from the oak, but there's some sweetness in here that's really just helping to pronounce the honey character. Um, the tannin is there because you know you have some honey, you have some oak. The acidity is pretty low on this. Yeah, not a lot of acidity. But that's okay, because I really wanted like a more warm profile, honey profile, and that's what I got here. Alcohol percent wise, it is almost non-existent. And this thing is pretty dang young. We're only like three or four months old for a 10 percenter. And I know some of you are already typing in the comments like, man, you should have waited and tasted this at a year. And you know, I can, but the truth is, even at this age, four months, 10% um, is not hot at all. We had a very clean fermentation. And that sweetness does kind of help to uh, hide a little bit of, of like any off flavors, but I don't really get any off flavors here. So if you have a chance to get a hold of some knotweed honey, I highly recommend to get a hold of some and just try it. It might not be local to you. Um, and of course, please go ahead and support local, lo support your local apiaries because they're doing important stuff as well. You might not be able to get the fun varietals like knotweed around you. Um, if you do local stuff, but you can still get quality honey and of course keep local businesses running. 
There are a bunch of other places you can get some fun honeys online, and I highly suggest to do that as well. Uh, essentially, just go and try some different honeys. The only way you're gonna experience this is to go, or experience different honeys, is to go and buy some. And you might have to spend some money, but it's okay. This as a traditional is fantastic. If I, if I were to try and pair it with some other fruit or something, I honestly would say a darker fruit, uh, berries or something like that would be interesting for this. I probably wouldn't go with a lighter pear, peach, delicate flavor like that because I think it might be blown away by the amount of aggressive flavor that is here. This could be really fun as a boche. I could see that going really well. Tons of options. And so I'd love to know if you've used knotweed honey below, let me know. Of course, I plan on making more mead with more honeys. I've already got some listed and ready to go. So I hope you're excited for that. Um, one thing I do want help with, if you wanna help make sure this video gets out there easier, it's as simple as hitting that like button because that helps the YouTube algorithm. And so um, let's see if we can get like 300 likes. That'd be really cool get 300 likes for this video. And then of course, subscribing. If you haven't subscribed to the channel that I'd love to uh, see you in the future on some more videos. I've already got tons of brewers going, brand new space. I put a bunch of little tiny knickknacks back here of fun things happening or that have happened in the channel in the six years it's been running. Feel free to tell me what you see back there that you recognize. And I hope to see you in the future in another video. So cheers.